All right, so we're going to be solving some quadratic equations now. The first method that we talk about is factorization method. So factorizing these types of expressions like this should be very familiar to you. And there's only one additional step after you've actually factorized. So there's not a whole a lot of new content here. So first one, it's monic. All right, so we have an easy technique here. We need to set it up in some brackets that look like this. The two numbers that go inside got a times to give 6 and add to give negative 5. Um, so those numbers would be negative 6 and positive 1. Now, once we get to this point um, in the solution, you'll notice that we have uh, this thing multiplied by this thing. And the product of those two things is equal to 0. So recall that if two things multiply and give an answer of zero, then either one of them has to be zero, the other one has to be zero, or in fact they could both be zero. All right, so let's go ahead and, and write some matching equations here. So if, if x minus six has to be zero, then this is going to result in a solution of six, all right, by adding six to both sides, this cancels, the right-hand side becomes six, and we have that x is equal to 6. Another way of thinking about it is that this, this in words means what number take away 6 is equal to 0. Uh, clearly that is 6. 6 take away 6 is equal to 0. The other option is, of course, that x plus 1 is equal to 0, which results in a solution what number plus 1 is equal to 0. That number would have to be minus 1. So our two solutions in this case uh, x is 6, and x is minus 1. Alright, question 2. Again, we need to factorise. So we need to set this thing up in brackets like this. Again, it's monic. Alright, so we can, we can set up our brackets in the very simple case. Um, two numbers at times to give 1 that add to give 2. Well, that's just 1 and 1. Alright. 1 times 1 is equal to 1, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Now notice that each of these brackets is the same. So this is going to be a situation where there is only one solution to the quadratic equation, namely that it comes from this guy here, x plus 1 is 0. So what number plus 1 is equal to 0? Well, just like we saw above, that is a solution of x is equal to minus 1. Right? And there's only one of those solutions. The final question here... Um, is a non-monic version because of the leading coefficient of 10. It's now no longer 1, as in the previous two examples. So we need to use our non-monic factorization technique, which was to set up some brackets like this, uh, 10x in the front of each. Right, and balance that with a tenth living out the front. We then needed to multiply our leading coefficient and our constant term. And we're now looking for two numbers that times to give negative 30 that add to give minus 13x. Uh, let's try negative 15 and 2. All right, so if we times those together, we get negative 30, which is what we want. And if we add negative 15 and 2, we get negative 13. Again, that's what we want. So we're going to fill our brackets with negative 15 and 2. All right, now looking at these brackets, will they factorize again? They both will. All right, in the first bracket, I've got that tenth there still. In the first bracket, there is a common five. It goes back in. Well, 2x minus 3 goes back in. And in the second bracket, there is a common 2. What goes back in? 5x and 1 still equal to 0. This 5 and the 2 is going to multiply together to give 10, and that's going to cancel with the 10th. So this is all gone. All right, so completely factorised, this thing looks like 2x minus 3, and then 5x plus 1 is equal to 0. So again, the situation is that either this bracket is equal to 0, or this bracket is equal to 0. So we'll write the two resulting equations from that. We're going to have 2x uh, minus 3 is equal to 0, or 5x plus 1 is equal to 0. And we just need to solve each of these. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. All right, 
which results in 2x equals 3. All right, then we're going to divide both sides by 2. And we end up with, I'm running out of room here, but x is equal to 3 over 2. All right. This time we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. We'll end up with 5x equals negative 1. We'll divide by 5. And we end up with x is equal to negative 1 fifth.